Uh, let us start the session vectors and 3D. First of all, in the introductory part of vectors and 3D, what I'd like to tell you, there is no difference between vectors and 3D, except that a vector uh, takes the direction and as well the magnitude, whereas we don't uh, consider the case of direction in three-dimensional geometry. So that's only the difference. And rest all are same. If you, you must be happy to see three-dimensional geometry from the window of vectors. What I mean to say by that, whatever the formula you learn in vectors, you must be in a position to convert those vector formulae to three-dimensional formulae. For example, if you take any equation in vector algebra, in vector algebra, the equations are denoted with the R bar. So what R bar represents in case of three-dimensional geometry, R bar is nothing but Xi bar plus Yj bar plus Zk bar. So Xyz is nothing but R bar in case of vectors. So if you want to convert any equation from vectors to 3D, simply replace R bar with Xi plus Yj plus Zk. Then all the different forms of vectors will be simply converted to three-dimensional form. So if you understand that, transformation from vectors to 3D and you can take vectors and 3D one and the same and from 3D you can even see 2D also. So the extended, for example, the extended form of two-dimensional geometry to three-dimensional geometry is nothing but the plane, is nothing but the plane. How? If you, if you take a 2D line, two-dimensional line, there will be a point of intersection for two-dimensional line. If uh, that uh, 2D line is to be extended to 3D form, then it becomes a plane because two planes intersect in a line. Two planes intersect in a line. So the set of the, the, the plane is formed by the lines only. So all the concepts of 2D lines will be straight away transformed to the 3D plane. For example, if you take the standard form of equation of the straight line in 2D form, it is AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero. If you take the same 3D plane equation, then it is AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equal to zero, extra Z will be formed. So now uh, for I to J main level, let us first of all understand the concepts or the synopsis briefly, and then we will move on to the problems. But before that, let us understand what is a vector. A vector consists of a vector consists of magnitude, direction, and the line of support. And the line of support. See, if you take the magnitude and the direction and the line of support, what the mathematician did, it is easy, it is easy to represent these three characteristics of the vector on a line. It is easy to represent these three characteristics of a vector on a line. Well, that is the reason why mathematician took a line to represent the vector. Took a line to represent the vector. Because if it is a line, obviously what happens, the direction is clearly seen there. And the magnitude, if you take, and the magnitude, if you take, this is something like a part of it, I'll take it as A, B. So magnitude is seen and the direction is seen and uh, the line of support, this is line of support, I'll call it as L here. So these three characteristics can be easily represented on a line. So what is that? Number one, magnitude. Number two, the direction or the sense. We also call it as sense. And number three, line of support. So these three can be easily shown on a line. That is the reason why mathematician has taken a line to represent a vector. It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that the vector is always in the form of a line, but it is easy to represent the vector on a line. That is the reason why mathematician has taken it. Now, coming to the algebra of vectors, algebra of vectors. What is that algebra here? First of all, we have to take the equality. 
equality is always to be checked out uh, whatever the uh, new systems are introduced uh, in mathematics so equality is to be seen how do we define that two vectors are equal how do we define that two vectors are equal two vectors are said to be equal if you see these three characteristics here number one the magnitude must be same number two the direction must be same and number or parallel the direction must be same and number three they must have same line of support or different lines of support they must have same line of support or different lines of support like this see if i draw a line which is parallel to this and if i create another vector if i create another vector with the same magnitude cd for example now what happens these two lines of support let me say this as l dash l and l dash are parallel to each other and uh, the distance between a and b is nothing but the magnitude is same as the distance between c and d and uh, both are equal and they have the same same they must have same line of support or parallel lines of support and the direction is one and the same in this case now we call it as ab bar is equal to cd bar this is what is to be understood so, so when you want to check the equality of two vectors these three characteristics are to be verified now <clears throat> coming to the addition subtraction multiplication because it is algebra of vectors coming to addition you have triangle law of addition and subtraction also can be defined with that only and then multiplication multiplication is nothing but uh, uh, the product of two vectors first of all we learn product of two vectors product of two vectors is nothing but is of two types number one scalar product number two vector product so what about the division then division is not defined in case of vectors so in the algebra part we will see number one the addition number two of course the subtraction comes under that only number three is multiplication in the multiplication as i said the multiplication can be scalar multiplication or it can be vector multiplication and after that you will have product of three vectors also it can be extended even to product of four vectors also let us see number one the addition please addition of two vectors in the addition of two vectors you might have learned this in physics also in physics applications also you you get this so when two vectors are added when should they be added this is one vector this is another vector now let me take let me take uh, this first vector as ab and the second vector as bc then the resultant of these two vectors the resultant of these two vectors for example you are pushing a table or you pushing a table for, uh, in the direction of ab and uh, pushing uh, uh, in, in this direction ab and some some other uh, person is also pushing the table in the direction of bc 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 and it is pushed in ab direction simultaneously it is pushed in bc direction then it moves in the resultant direction it moves in the resultant direction what is the resultant direction the resultant direction is nothing but ac ac here this is nothing but the triangle law of addition now in this case we simply add these two this is nothing but ac bar is equal to ab bar ab bar plus bc bc bar so this is nothing but triangle law of addition so ac bar is equal to ab bar plus bc bar widely understanding broadly understanding what i need to say broadly understanding you can see that this b will be eliminated this b will be eliminated and ac remains here so what is that you have to understand for the resultant vector the initial point is the initial point of the first vector and the terminal point is the terminal point of the second vector this is the resultant vector so now in the problems in the problems if you want to apply this uh, addition of a triangle law of addition this is nothing but the triangle law of 
addition. Triangle law of addition, if you want to apply without any direction, without any direction. In this diagram, what I did, I have mentioned the directions. If you have a triangle and you want to apply the triangle of addition uh, and the, the directions are not mentioned here, this is one triangle. This is one triangle. Now you want to apply, you want to apply triangle of addition, A, B, C. Then in this case, what happens? Uh, if you want to write A, B bar first, then what we do now, we start again from A and go to C and continue to B. You want to write A, B bar? Then start from the initial point A, go to C and continue to B. That's what it is. Triangle of addition. A, B bar is A, C bar plus C, B bar. Mm -hmm. now, now, if you want to change the direction of A, C bar, and if you want to change the direction of C, B bar, then what happens, as you know, this AC bar becomes minus CA bar. And this CB bar becomes minus BC bar when the, direct, the direction is reversed. When the direction is reversed, then what I would like to tell you here, then sum of this in the same, when they are calculated, when they are written like this AB bar, bring this minus BC bar to other side, plus BC bar, plus CA bar, is equal to zero bar. This is what you have to understand with regards to the uh, a triangle uh, when it is uh, when the triangle of addition is applied. So a b bar plus b c bar plus c a bar is equal to zero bar. Is the triangle law of addition when it is applied to a triangle? Now, what is that? Point? What is that? You have to observe in this case. What is that you are observing in this case? I'd like to tell you like this. Now this is, just to see, what is a common, common alphabet for AB plus BC? B will be removed. And then AC you will get according to this. This is what I'm talking about. AB plus BC and B removed AC you will get. Here also a B removed AC you will get. AC plus CA. AC plus CA, both are in the opposite direction. And hence it becomes zero bar. It becomes a zero bar. So remember this, this we will be applying in the problems. AB bar plus BC bar plus CA bar is equal to zero bar. This is triangle law of addition. Okay. Now, <clears throat> coming to the parallelogram law of addition now, the same can be extended even to parallelogram law of addition. Like what? Like what? Let us see that. Let us see that. Now, Parallelogram law of addition, we will form a parallelogram with the same, with the same sides that, that we will draw parallel sides to this triangle here. So draw a line which is uh, parallel to AB, parallel to AB and parallel to BC, like this. And uh, this is, you understand, this is a vector which is drawn parallel to BC and another line parallel to AB. And their common point is, common point is D here, D here. So this is nothing but, this is nothing but, a parallelogram formula, and uh, what is that you observe here? And uh, if you if you have the adjacent sides of AB, uh, adjacent side of the parallelogram as AB and uh, AD, AB and AD, then uh, you can see. A, otherwise, a, if the adjacent sides of a parallelogram are AB bar and BC bar, then its a diagonal is AB plus BC. Its a diagonal is AB plus BC. And even you can write BD also in this case. Let us write BD. What is BD now? Let us apply again triangle of addition. Let us apply again triangle of addition. So what is it? BD bar, apply the same. What is that same? What I mean to say by same here is triangle of addition again. Start from B, go to C. Or start from B, or go to A, whatever. Whatever we will we will do like this because because I want to show 
a commutative law here. Let us go like this. BD bar is equal to BA bar. AD bar. Yes, sir. So, what is uh, BA bar, please? What is BA bar? It's nothing but minus AD bar. What BC. is AD bar? It's nothing but BC bar. BC. BC bar. So, I will write this as minus AB bar. Plus, I can write it as BC bar. So, you can see this is one diagonal is AB plus BC and the other diagonal is BC minus AB. That means if you take this as something like A bar, this as B bar, this also becomes A bar, this also becomes B bar. Then if one diagonal is A bar plus B bar, other diagonal becomes B bar minus A bar, or you, 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 even you can take uh, A bar minus B bar also. So therefore, A bar plus B bar, comma, A bar minus B bar, you can take, you can neglect that uh, a sign there, A bar minus B bar, or diagonals of parallelogram whose adjacent sides are A bar and B bar, A bar and B bar. Now, if you want to understand whether, you know, in the real number system, you can say two plus three is equal to three plus two. That is addition of real numbers is commutative. Now, if you want to understand whether addition of two vectors is commutative or not, then it can be proved through this one, like this. Now, what I did, I have taken the lower triangle ABC here. I have taken the lower triangle ABC here, and I wrote AC bar as AB bar plus BC bar. Now, I'll take upper triangle now, upper triangle. If you, if you take upper triangle now, then what will be AC bar? AD plus DC, AD plus DC. So in triangle, I'll change the color, just a moment. In triangle, ACD, In triangle ACD, do you tell me what is AC bar? Kaushik, AC bar is equal to? Sir, AB bar, um, I mean, AD bar plus DC bar. AD bar plus DC bar. Now, Pranit, do you tell me what is the equivalent vector of AD bar, please? Pranit. Sir. What is the equivalent vector of AD bar? BC bar. Uh, what is the BC. equivalent vector of DC bar? DC bar. DC bar. Uh, BC. Uh, AC, AB, sir. Sorry. AB. Correct, no? Opposite one. Opposite one. Yes, sir. What is that? You got here. The same AC, the same AC is AB plus BC here. The same AC bar is AB plus BC mm -hmm. here. And the same AC is is what bc, BC plus ab bc plus this is also ac now this is again the same so what does it mean what does it mean ab plus bc is equal to bc plus AB. So what is that you understand, please? The addition of two vectors is nothing but commutative. This is what you have to understand. The addition okay. of two vectors is commutative. commutative. Okay. So this is about the addition of two vectors, uh, uh, first triangle of addition, and then parallelogram law of addition. If the adjacent sides of uh, uh, a parallelogram are A bar and B bar, then their diagonals are given by A bar plus B bar and A bar minus B bar or its diagonals. Okay, now the types of vectors. In the types of vectors, mainly what we come across in solving the problems is a position vector. Position vector is nothing but, nothing but, you have to understand like this. A vector has both magnitude and direction but no fixed position. The vector has magnitude and direction, but no fixed position. 
That means you can fix the position of any vector wherever you want, wherever you want. So position vector means it is, uh, you can choose any point as uh, its position. So now in solving the problems, what is that we get? If you take a vector, if you take a vector, let me say a b bar, let me take a b bar here. Now, I have taken most generally origin as the position. Then let me join this O A, O A, O B. Now I want to understand A B in terms of O A O B. I want to understand A B in terms of O A and O B. So what is that I can do? I'll be writing this A B bar now. What is A B bar? A O bar plus O B bar. That's good. A O bar plus O B bar. Now this A O bar can be written as minus in the direction of it minus O A bar. So this is called A B bar is equal to O B bar minus O A bar is nothing but it can also be said as position vector of B minus position vector of A. This is what you have to understand. So writing any vector in terms of another position, another position goes like this. For example, if you want to write P Q bar, where O is the origin and origin, origin of reference if you take, then P Q bar is nothing but O Q bar minus O B bar. This we will be applying with regards to the position vectors, okay? Now, our main, uh, main types of vectors only I'm discussing about, and then uh, co-initial vectors. What does it mean by co-initial vectors, co-terminal vectors? Generally, you need to have to by heart or remember, uh, just to, from the name itself, you can understand. Co-initial, co-initial means what? Co-initial means uh, the initial point coincides. Co-initial vectors. Initial point coincides means. So what does it mean if you take a vector like this, another vector like this, another vector like this, another vector like this, one more vector like this, one more vector like this, and all these vectors understand? All these vectors understand? are coinciding coinciding at the initial point. So these are all said to be co-initial vectors, co-initial vectors. Then obviously, I need not have to tell you what will be co-terminal vectors. What are the co-terminal vectors then? Renit? Co-terminal vectors. In the name itself, we have the meaning of it. Co-terminal, exactly opposite to this. What are the co-terminal vectors, please? All the terminal points will be coinciding. All the terminal points will be coincided. This is called, co. these are called co-terminal vectors co-terminal vectors, okay? So, now, mainly, these are the types of vectors, not only this, and mainly you have zero vector. What is a zero vector? Zero vector is that vector whose magnitude is zero, and very important point to remember, that. very important point to remember is that zero vector has a, Zero magnitude, zero vector has 
zero magnitude. Magnitude zero, there's no doubt in it. And uh, any one of you, please, do you tell me in what direction uh, zero vector moves? Because it is a vector, it must have a direction. Do you tell me if the magnitude is zero, then what should be its direction? Pranit, I'll caution. Its direction Sir, is and if... arbitrary. Yes, sir. Its direction is arbitrary means it moves in whatever the direction you want. There is no fixed direction for zero vector. It's a direction is arbitrary. For example, if you want to add a zero vector to a bar, it will be comfortably added. Zero bar plus a bar plus uh, a bar plus zero bar gives you a bar only. It cannot be added unless these two directions are same. But zero bar can be added to any vector of your choice. Addition of two vectors is possible only when they are in the same direction. Addition of vectors is possible only when they are in the same direction. If zero bar has a, a, a fixed direction, it cannot be added to all the vectors. So that's the reason why this is a very important point for a zero vector, the direction is arbitrary. Very, very important point, please. Direction of zero vector is arbitrary, okay? And uh, most importantly, the unit vector. The unit vector. So, what is a unit vector? Vector is equal to one. Huh. What repeat? Vector answer will be one. Huh. It is a vector whose so magnitude which has equals to unity. Huh. It is a vector whose magnitude is one. For example, if the A bar is a vector. If you find its length, you no know, length is denoted by modulus, as you know, modulus of a bar is one, is one. So it is denoted by a cap. Cap on the head it represents the unit vector. So a cap is equal to uh, is a unit vector, and if you take a modulus of it, not equal to that's a vector. That's a vector. I'll I'll write like this. Small a, a bar is equal to one, and uh, uh, a cap is its representation. Okay. Now you are given a vector. For example, you are given uh, something like. Uh, Mm, AI bar plus BJ bar plus CK bar. You want to convert this vector as a unit vector, as a unit vector, then its magnitude must be one. Its magnitude must be one. But before that, how do we define the magnitude? Magnitude of any vector is, uh, for example, if you take modulus of XI, that is the magnitude plus YJ plus ZK. Is nothing but root over x square plus y square plus z square. In three dimensional geometry, how do you say this? In three dimensional geometry, this will be represented as a point xyz. It will be represented as a point xyz, and uh, then uh, that point xyz is at a distance of root or x square plus y square plus z square from the origin. So you have to understand that. Modulus is nothing but the distance of the point from the origin. Please remember that. Okay. I repeat, I repeat. Modulus of any vector in three dimensional form to be defined, it is nothing but, it is nothing but the distance. It is nothing but, just a moment please, just a moment. What I'm doing, I'll take the x, y, third axis so that it will be more comfortable. This is x axis, this is y axis, this is z axis. Now, if you oh, if you take a, any point, any arbitrary point in the space as x, y, z, 
in three dimensional geometry, it is shown as a point and uh, in vectors, how do we see this? This is the origin here. You know, origin is zero, 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 which is a zero vector, which is a zero vector in three dimensional geometry. It is taken as the origin here. Now the distance between these two, OP, you know the distance formula, I need not have to tell you that. The distance formula is nothing but this only, this only, root or x squared plus y squared plus z squared. In vectors, how do we write this? We write it as OP bar. In vectors, we write it as OP bar. This is what the uh, understanding you must have to transform uh, from vectors to 3D. Vectors to 3D, understanding vectors, vectors in the form of 3D is this. So modulus of any vector means it is nothing but its length. It is nothing but its length from the origin, from the origin. Then if it is not the origin, then what happens? We will see that. If it is not the origin, what happens? We will see that. See, if it is not the origin, what happens now? You know, shifting of origin. When you shift the origin to some other point, I'll, 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 I'll make you understand that. First of all, you tell me whether you understand this or not. Modulus of any vector, we know this. Modulus of x i plus y j plus z k is nothing but root or x square plus y square plus z square. And uh, it is modulus of OP is nothing but the uh, distance of a point x, y, z from the origin in three dimensional form. In the vectors, it is mod OP. Okay, now why I have taken this case in the uh, unit vector, if you want to convert this, for example, this is x bar. If you want to express this x bar as a unit vector, then simply divide this x bar with its modulus. x bar by modulus of x bar is nothing but x cap. x cap. So it is converted now. Ai plus bj plus ck divided by what? Root over a square plus b square plus c square. Okay, now further, we will be calling this as DCs, direction cosines. These are said to be direction cosines, please understand. A by root over A square plus B square plus C square. B by root over A square plus C square, A square plus B square plus C square. C by root over A square plus B square plus C square. Do you see the screen or not? Respond, please. Respond. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So, A by root or A square plus B square plus C square, B by root or A square plus B square plus C square, C by root or A square plus B square C square are said to be the DC's direction cosines. And in three-dimensional geometry, they are denoted as L comma M comma N. What I'm doing now, I'm just explaining you vectors and 3D simultaneously and then not simultaneously how to see vectors in the form of 3D and how to convert 3D form, vector forms to 3D form. That is seeing three dimensional geometry from the window vectors I am teaching you. So in the unit vector is nothing but DCs, understand that. In, in three dimensional geometry, we call it as DCs. Are you there, Koshik? Yes, sir. So unit vector is equal to what I mean to say, unit vector is equal to element in three-dimensional geometry. Element is nothing but direction cosines. Then you must be understanding what are the direction ratios. Very simple. What all the points are there uh, other than DCs are nothing but DRs. Are nothing but DRs. And a particular, if you take a particular line, DRs are defined differently. A, B, C are nothing but DRs. But A by root A square plus B square plus C square, B by root A square plus B square plus C square, C by root A square plus B square, C square is nothing but DCs. So DCs and DRs, these direction cosines and these are direction ratios. What is the relation between them? They are proportional, understand that. They are proportional. So what I mean to say here, if you want to convert any vector to a unit vector, divide that particular vector with its modulus, then it will be converted to unit vector. So unit vector is nothing but the uh, in three-dimensional geometry is denoted as element and they are nothing but direction cosines. And do you know the sum of the squares of direction cosines? L square plus M square plus N square value. Anyone tell me this? Sir, one. 
It's always one place. Just check it out. A square by A square plus B square plus C square. B square by A square plus B square plus C square. C square by A square plus B square plus C square. It's nothing but A square plus B square plus C square by A square plus B square plus C square. It's nothing but one. So this is, this is nothing but the DRs, D, DCs uh, in three-dimensional geometry. Why do we call them as direction cosines, please? Why not direction sines? Do you imagine? You tell me. We are calling them as DCs, no? Why we are calling them as direction cosines? Why not direction sines? Very simple thing is that the direction cosines means you always see the horizontal component is cosine. If you take this now, this is a horizontal component on x axis. So this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent side. If I take this point as x, y, z, this is nothing but x now. So this is nothing but alpha. Then what is cos alpha? X, y, O, P. Similarly, what will be cos beta? Anyone, both of you, please. Any one of you, tell me what is cos beta. Then if I, if I say beta is the angle made by O, P with the y axis, cos beta is nothing but y by O, P. X, y, P. Cos gamma, please. If it is the angle made by O, P with z axis, z by O, P. Then squaring and adding, you'll get one. Just check it out. Yes, sir. Cos square alpha um, is cos square beta plus cos square gamma. Is equal to one. Plus y square plus z square by op square is nothing but op square is nothing but root or x square plus y square plus z square. And that becomes one. And the l square plus m square plus n square is equal to one is same as cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma. Then what is that you have to understand in case of direction cosines? Direction cosines are nothing but cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma, then what are alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, beta, gamma, or the angles made by a line OP, a line OP with X axis, Y axis, and Z axis, respectively, respectively. So if I take X, Y, Z like this, and if I take any line, any line OP, this is the point P here. Let me say, you can visualize that this OP is making an angle alpha with X axis and beta with y axis and gamma with z axis. Then cos alpha gives you, this is what I, I've been telling you, x, y, z, cos alpha gives you x by o, p. Cos beta gives you y by o, p. Cos gamma gives you z by o p, please. Squaring and adding them, you are getting cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is equal to one. You have good number of previous questions also on this concept. For example, you will be given a question like this. If a line op is making angles 45 degrees and 60 degrees, with x, y, and z axis, x, y, uh, with x, y axis respectively, with x and y axis respectively, then what is the angle made by the same line with z axis? Then what is that given? Alpha given? Beta given. Beta given. What is to be find out? Gamma is to be find out. Then substitute the values here. Cos square alpha, cos square 45, 1 by 2. Cos square 60, 1 by 2 whole square plus cos square gamma is equal to what? One. Then cos square gamma is equal to, this is four LCM, two plus one, three, three by four. So one minus three by four, one by four. So this is nothing but cos gamma can be taken as one by Hold two. Uh, gamma is equal to 60 degrees. You can take. 
or even 120 degrees. Like this, the questions will be on the basis of the direction cosines d6. Okay. okay. So that's about the unit vector. Unit vector plays a major role, you know, in the, throughout the, uh, the vector algebra, and you must be in a position to understand that. Okay. Okay. Now, parallel vectors or collinear vectors. After this, we will take some problems and work out. Parallel or collinear vectors. What are the parallel vectors and collinear vectors? And in case of two-dimensional geometry, there's no problem at all. We'll be checking out the slopes. Or we'll be finding, uh, oh, that, that is, uh, if your three points are collinear, then we will find out generally, if you remember well in two-dimensional geometry, in two-dimensional geometry, if you want to check, if you want to check whether three points are collinear or not, how do you proceed, please? A, B, C are three points, given. Kaushik, how do you prove in two-dimensional geometry, three points are collinear? Any one of you? Pranit, Kaushik. Sir? How do we prove three points in two-dimensional geometry are collinear or not? We find Sir, uh, Yeah, tell me. Uh, Sir, first we need to find the slope of AB, then BC. Uh, if they are equal, then uh, points are collinear, sir. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, or similarly, we will find out the area of the triangle ABC. Also. AB, BC, CA. Uh, Sir, AB plus BC equals to AC or... Uh, that means this, we can call it as a universal condition. Why universal? Slope of the line, generally y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1, we take because they are two-dimensional geometry, you'll have two dimensions only. But in three-dimensional geometry, what happens even in vectors also, you'll have z also, x, y, z. That is the reason why slope case cannot be extended from 2D to 3D. That is the reason why mathematician has introduced DRs and DCs. DRs and DCs, that's the reason why mathematician has introduced. So parallel or collinear vectors, how do we prove it? Just a simple A, B, B, C, A, C, we will find out and we will find out their lengths, AB bar, modulus of AB bar, modulus of BC bar, modulus of AC bar. If sum of any two is equal to third one, then we call them as collinear. We call them as collinear vectors, okay? So, so, now, it's okay, but, if you want to prove the parallel parallel vectors, if two vectors are to be proved parallel, then how do we see this? How do we see this? I'll take a simple example to explain this. I'll take a simple example. For example, I have taken B as the midpoint. Let me say, let me say, I have taken B as the midpoint of A. I will take one more point D as midpoint of A. I will take uh, E as midpoint of BC. Then, uh, tell me what is the relation between AB and AC? No one is responding. AB is half of AC. Can I say like this? Yes, sir. DB is one fourth of AC? Yes, sir. Brilliant. And uh, AC is double of AB? Yes, sir. And similarly, AE is three fourth of AB? Are you there? You see this? Now let me change them to vectors. Let me change them to vectors. Okay. When I'm changing them to vectors, what the mathematician observed, 
mathematician observed that there is a scalar in between. There is a scalar in between. Then, what he, how he formulated it, how he formulated it. If you have two vectors, if you have two vectors, if they are parallel or collinear, if they are parallel or collinear, you can, you can, if you are able to find out such a relation between two vectors A bar and B bar, like A bar is equal to lambda B bar, where lambda, of course, not equal to zero, then we can say that these two vectors are collinear or parallel. Remember that. So, if there are two vectors, if you are able to form a linear relation like this, then we can comfortably say that these two vectors are parallel or collinear. Parallel or collinear. So, this is the condition you have to see, you have to learn in vectors. And if you want to prove two vectors are parallel or collinear, then form a linear relation like this. Form a linear relation like this. This is what I have explained you through an example. Okay. Now, if I, if I, take a, a, a problem, then you will be more comfortable. Let me take a problem here. Just a moment. See, what I'm taking, let me write a vector. Let me write a vector. Let me say, let A bar is equal to Ri minus 4j plus k. B bar is equal to 9i minus 12j plus 3k. You need not have to think about this. Here B bar is nothing but 3a bar. Implies a bar is parallel to B bar. Are you there, both of you? Or there, what I'm talking about, yes, you understand? Sir. Yes, sir. B bar is nothing but three times of A bar, and hence uh, there exists a linear relation between B bar and A bar, and hence we can say that they are parallel or collinear. Then, yes, how sir. do you see this in three dimensional form? How do you see this in three dimensional form? Very simple. They must be proportional. That is, 3 by 9 is equal to minus 4 by minus 12 is equal to 1 by 3. Okay. And this is 3D form. So there is no difference, no? There is yes. no difference between vectors and 3D, except mm -hmm. that in vectors, what happens, you know, that will be packed. The vector is packed, that the point is packed, the three components are packed as A bar, three components are packed as B bar. They are, they are, they are presented as in the split form in three-dimensional geometries. This is what you have to understand. So parallel condition in three-dimensional geometry, how it goes? Parallel condition in three-dimensional geometry, how it goes? Let me say the x bar is a vector, which is a1i plus b1j plus c1k. And y bar is equal to a2i plus b2j plus c2k. Then if a bar is parallel to b bar, any one of you, please. If A bar is parallel to B bar, you tell me what happens then? A1 by A2 equals to C1 by B2 equals to C1 by C2. This is what you have to understand. <clears throat> but how this is seen in vectors? This is seen as a linear combination. This is seen as a linear combination like this, which is nothing but A bar by B bar is equal to lambda. A bar by B bar is equal to lambda. Understand this. If you understand this, the entire vectors and 3D goes easy for you. So the representation of parallel or collinear vectors in vectors, parallel or collinear vectors in vectors is shown as A bar is equal to lambda B bar. It is converted to 3D, is shown like this. A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is equal to C1 by C2 is equal to lambda. So let us work out some problems based on this, okay? Now, let us, at random, let us check uh, the synopsis, the interaction. We need not have to see that because just now I said a vector, 
uh, has three characteristics. Number one, uh, direction. Number one, magnitude. Number two, direction. Number three, line of support. A representation of a vector is done by a line because line is uh, uh, convenient to represent the length, support, and sense. Sense is nothing but the direction. Types of vectors, just now we have seen zero or null vector, zero vector. Important point to remember, important point to remember is that zero vector has a, a, a arbitrary direction. So direction is undefined. It takes whatever the direction you want. So that is the reason why he said it as arbitrary. And unit vector, its length is one unit. Its length is one unit. Like and unlike vectors. Like and unlike vector means uh, if a bar is one vector and uh, minus a bar is another vector, they are in the opposite direction. That is why like vector and unlike vectors in the name itself, you have the meaning of it. Collinear or parallel vectors, just now I discussed. There it is a linear relation between them. Co-initial vectors, I discussed. Their initial point coincides. Coplanar vectors, we will be coming across that in the next part. Okay, we will see that. Coplanarity, you have good, uh, good, good, good lengthy discussion is there for coplanarity of uh, uh, two vectors. Two vectors. So, what happens? Next, negative of a vector, just now you, you know that. What happens if the vector is uh, uh, given a negative? That is A bar. What is the difference between A bar and minus A bar, please? Any one of you? Sir. Sir, direction. Direction. It'll, be, it'll become opposite. Sir. Yes, exactly. You know that. This is in this direction, and this will be in this direction. Magnitude, yes. everything is same. Only thing is the direction will be reversed. Reversed. Okay. Now, coterminous vectors. Tell me what is coterminous vector? Coterminous vectors or uh, having uh, same term, terminal point as well. Uh, I explained you already. I explained you already. Reciprocal of a vector. Reciprocal means uh, mod a bar is equal to a and modulus yes. of a, a inverse. A inverse is equal to 1 by a, yes, sir. A unit vector is self reciprocal because its length is uh, one unit. One, sir. One. One unit. Okay. And then localized and free vectors wherever the, this comes we will see that again position vectors i explained you yes, sir. equality of two vectors they have the same they, their lengths are same they have the same line of support and the same sense or direction rectangular representation of a three-dimensional system that is xi plus yj plus zk and modulus of r bar is root or x square plus y square plus z square and uh, just now I explained you. So modulus of R is magnitude, means, sir. Pardon me? Ah. Magnitude of R is magnitude. Like modulus of R is magnitude. Oh, magnitude. It is yeah. magnitude. Modulus yeah. of R is nothing but a magnitude. Yes, Koshik. Could you forward the PDF of vectors, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Now, uh, this is uh, alpha, beta, gamma. Very important point, please. Very important point. Many students, they are not. Uh, uh, um, uh, they're not uh, aware of what alpha, beta, gamma is, why they are uh, named as direction for sense or not. Alpha is the angle made by a line with x-axis, and uh, beta is with uh, y-axis, and gamma is with z-axis. If you take cos alpha, you'll get horizontal component, that is x. If you, if you take cos beta, you'll get y. It's also horizontal component. If you uh, take cos gamma, you'll get z, that is nothing but vertical. Uh, that is, that's also horizontal component. What I mean to say, the components are split by writing it as cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma, and cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is equal to one. Let us, uh, let us have a glance at these questions. These are very simple questions. You need not have to put your pen on the paper. Now, if A bar is a non-zero vector of modulus A and M is a non-zero scalar, are you there, please? I'm reading it. Yes, sir. If A bar is a non-zero vector of modulus A and M is a non-zero scalar, then MA bar is a unit vector if. Option, please. <laughs> the solution, solution is there, but don't see the solution. Uh, just see the option and tell me. Uh, so A bar, uh, a MA bar becomes a unit vector only when M becomes one. No. What is the meaning of... Uh, Unit vector, first of all. If m is equal to 1. Uh, what is the meaning of a uh, unit vector? Tell me. 
unit vector is modulus of some vector should be one modulus of a bar is equal to one one right, no? modulus of a bar is equal to one so if a bar is made as m a bar where m is any scalar then m a bar is a unit vector when what happens then its modulus must also be one yes sir obviously modulus of ma bar then only it will satisfy the conditions ha huh. then bring m out mod m into mod a. a is equal to 1 what is mod a 1 one mod m also is one so m must be equal to plus or one. minus 1 why should we write plus or minus 1 here one is in the upward direction other one is in the downward direction upward direction generally taken to be positive and the downward direction is taken to be negative this is one in the upward direction other one is in the downward direction so if i say this as upward as a cap then downward is Minus a cap. Both are unit vectors only, but they are opposite in the direction. That is the reason why you get plus or minus one for this one. That's the reason why you get plus or minus one for this one. Okay. So similarly, uh, second question, please. Second question, please. For a non-zero vector, for a non-zero vector a. The set of real numbers satisfying modulus of phi minus x into a bar, modulus of phi minus x into a bar less than modulus of two a bar consists of all x such that. Let me write the condition, and you also understand that. What is that given? Modulus of phi minus x into a bar less than modulus of Two a bar consists of all x such that. Let me do that. See ya. This is simple. Let me write this as five minus x into. Modulus of a bar less than two into modulus of a bar. If modulus of a bar is a non-zero vector, it should be given. Then you can cancel it off. Or if it is a non-zero vector, then what is that you get? Phi minus x modulus of phi minus x less than two, please. Do you tell me what happens now? Modulus of phi minus x less than Two. This is what you have got. Modulus of phi minus x less than two. Then, what is the meaning of it? When you want to eliminate modulus, you know less than two is there. That means your phi minus x must lie between minus two and plus two. Please understand that. Very important point, please. Very important point. Both of you, please understand this. What I am saying. I'm taking an example here. Mod x is less than a. Yes, sir. Means x lies between minus a plus. Yes, sir. Boshi. Sir. Mod x is greater than a. Means x never lies between minus a plus a. Okay. X is less than minus a. Or x is greater than a. Please understand that. Understand that, please. Okay. So what happens? What okay. happens if you simplify this now? Minus. Uh, bring that uh, phi to other side. Bring that phi to other side, please. Then what is that you get? Minus two minus phi. Minus seven, less than minus three. x, less minus. than two minus five minus three. Minus three. 
Uh, now multiply with minus. It will be reversed. 3 less than x less than x. So this relation is possible. This relation, whatever the relation is possible, only when x lies between 3 and 3 to 7. Positive 3 to 7. Uh, plus 3 to plus 7. 7. X value lies between that. When x value is not lying between these two, this it relation is not possible. Uh, that yes. will not be satisfied. That. Okay. So that is one more question here. Yeah. And uh, let us understand that. Option number B. This is important. Yeah. What is option B? Now let us understand this. This is important one. Uh, okay. the, the thesis of 3i minus 4j plus 5k. Just first of all, both of you, yes, sir. understand what are the DCs first. OAOB ocean. Direction cosines. Ah. It's nothing but in 3D, it is denoted as element. And in fact, as per the definition, it is cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma. And direction cosines means if you see this in 3D form, it is A bar. And in three vector form, if you see, DCs are nothing but unit vector. Very important point, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. DCs are nothing but unit vector. So convert A bar as unit vector. A bar by mod A bar gives you unit vector. That unit vector is nothing but DCs. Come on, convert it now. 3i minus 4g plus 5k by whole divided by huh, whole divided under by root under root 3 square plus minus 4 square plus 5 square. 3 square that minus 4 whole square becomes plus 4 plus, square plus, plus 5 square. square so now what are the DCs according to this one this one is root 49 just see that 49 yes, sir. yeah that 49. is 49 so yes, what should be the this is now uh, is nothing but three, three by seven. You can write plus or minus also, no problem. Okay, sir. Plus or minus three by seven. Minus, minus four, four by plus seven. Four by seven. Because minus four is there. Yes, sir. Plus yes, sir. or minus five by seven. Koshik, are you there? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. That's it. So understand DCs and Unit vector are one and the same. Yes, sir. And unit vector are one and the same. Yes. So this is how we convert any vector to DC okay. and any vector to a unit vector. Unit vector is nothing but DC. DC. And they are denoted as element. So in this case, what are element? Element are plus or minus 3 by 7? Minus or, minus or plus 4 by 7? Plus or so minus 5 by 7. Minus. How do we see this? Uh, uh, these two vectors. One is in the upward direction. Other one is in the downward direction. Downward that is direction. Exactly, exactly opposite directions. One yes. unit vector in the upward. Another unit vector is in the downward, downward direction. Okay. Yes, sir. Now we will continue this in the next session. Okay, sir.